Mm. Mm -mm -mm. bringing in this in real hot like Mike so let me let me start this like we uh, start most of ours what have you been working on this week man mm -hmm. show show the class yep oh yeah Damn. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I've been uh, I've been making some uh, real progress this week. I uh, I got a lot of stuff worked on my neck. I uh, I got my my body, you know, looking cute, cute. Let's start with the neck first, though. I uh, I got I uh, got it carved out. That that's not a uh, my volute right there. Uh, that's not finished sanded yet. That's just a hundred grit on there. Uh, still got some lumpy butts. Yeah, that's nice, right? Yeah, and that's gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna put a two part poly over the whole whole backside and leave the the back of the uh, neck and the body raw. But uh, this is the front, the coupe de la poo. Yeah, baby. That's what we got working with right there. I fucking love how this came out. You know. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'll be there, man. Anytime. And uh, I, I'm going to put it in the uh, the body cavity so we got a, a quick uh, idea of what this guitar is kind of going to look like. So that's it right there, baby. So, oh, thank you. I'm re really happy with how it's coming out. I'll tell you what I'm going to be working on with the the guitar here pretty soon. I just uh, I did did a quick quick sand and put a uh, just a quick lacquer over it just to see what it looked like and all that stuff. So I knew what I was going to be carving out. But basically, I'm going to be carving. First off, I'm going to be cutting this off. So the heel fits in it better. And then I'm going to carve this back for the hand. I might go all the way up here and carve it. I, I like extra room for my hand. Uh, I'm going to be giving it a a big chunky carve. I don't know if you see the line right there. I'm be carving that all the way down. And then I I think I'm going to go with a uh, a chamfer all the way around the the guitar for the, the rest of it. Just so we have a... With the chamfer, with uh, how thin the, the resin is on top, if you can see that, real thin. That's how thin it is, because I wanted the wood to show behind it, because, you know, it, it's always super nice when they do that. But, yeah, if I give it, like, a quarter-inch chamfer, we'll get the mahogany coming out from right behind it, so it'll it'll border it and kind of resemble a binding. Yeah, so... You know, I, I'm afraid of doing it, but, you know, I'm also like, I'm going to try it. Even if it fucks it up, I'm still going to try it, you know. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, I do all set next on mine. I, I you know, it's a, a thing I, I came to learn and love from Ben Crow. 
you know, he was explaining one day the difference between bolt-on and set necks. Basically, bolt-on necks are a uh, a factory guitar type deal. You know, Fender, Gibson, and all that stuff. Every You know, flying out the door every which way. You do bolt-on necks, so it makes it faster for production. Set necks, you know, you got to glue it up, and, you know, that's an extra day out of your time that you got to do. If you just do bolt-on necks, it's a few holes, and you throw it out the door, you know? So uh, I'm, not a, I'm not personally a set uh, a bolt-on neck guy. I've never done a bolt-on, and I might do it just to just to learn how to do it, the process and all that stuff, but I'm not too worried about the the technicalities of bolt-ons because I know I can do a bolt-on, you know? It, it's just a couple, couple screw holes and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm a set neck guy. <laughs> what about you? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the speaking the gospel, you know, I hear that. But, you know, at the same time, I, I want to get my craft to a level where, you know, it's not going to be fucked up 10 years from now, you know. And, you know, If it gets fucked up 15 years from now, I'll be long gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gonna have to catch me, coppers. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'll be dead by then, shit. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I would if I could, shit. You know, I just never got the option. I'll take superpowers any day, right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man yep uh, so my next guitar oh yeah I'm gonna be really bummed out if you don't don't make the deadline you better start hustling baby it's it's dwindling down what well, we got a month and a half before it has to has to be uh, uploaded Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially with some, you know, you got knives going at a thousand miles an hour, you know, that can get a little dangerous. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, WD-40 does wonders. Yeah. Spray her down. Spray her down. She'll stay happy. Yeah. 
Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. My next bill, you know, when we do our Halloween competition, you know, and if anybody wants to join, uh, I'm sure we'll come up with like a flyer or something, you know. Uh, but you know we're we're doing a ho hosting a Halloween competition just a for funsies one. There's not going to be any prizes or anything. But uh, anybody on YouTube or social media that wants to join, feel free. You know, drop us a link and we'll we'll uh, you know share your videos and stuff also. So yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, next one I'm gonna do a I'm gonna try my hand at a a through neck. I haven't done one of those yet. Uh, so you know. I think I'm going to go through neck headless on this one because, you know, I talked about it. I'm going to do the headless horseman from Sleepy Hollow. So, you know, why not? Why not try out a headless guitar, right? <laughs> so, what about you, man? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I <laughs> I haven't got to it, but I'll get there one day. One day. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> oh man yeah i feel it no nah, but uh yeah uh after last week our conversation where are they at i uh went ahead and picked up some well, there's somewhere on here but yeah i went ahead and picked up some uh some of those orange drop capacitors yeah yeah they're somewhere on my desk Smart, yeah. You know, so I'm excited to see how those work out for me. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, just just holding on to it. Oh, here they are. In comparison to, into comparison, I want to see if I can find one of the other capacitors that I use. Yeah, they're just so much, so much beefier, you know. I just, you, yeah, I can't find any, but yeah, went ahead and bought a couple of them. So, um, <laughs> I want to say it was like eight dollars for two of them. Yeah, I mean, not bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I wanted to get the... I know, right? I just wanted to get a couple of the good ones. And, you know, $8 for two of them. I'd, I'd say they're probably pretty good. They're probably legit. I looked at all the comments and stuff. But, yeah, like you're saying, you know, my the old ones I used, you know, they're little, little green, square-looking ones. They're, you know... Five cents for a thirty-five of them, something like that. <laughs> so, I, I'm pretty excited to try these out. I, oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. I also got some Flux Core solder that you recommended. So it's it's on there somewhere. I don't know. But yeah, got a couple tubes of. Oh, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, you know, I got a three pack of the Flux Core solder. You know, nice, nice tube. You just, you just lead it out of there, and nice thing to hold on to. So I'm pretty st stoked off of that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Went this long without it. <laughs> yeah. There you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. No, nah, I feel that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, what I've been accumulating. Uh, hi. Hello. Mm. <laughs> yep. You don't have. <laughs> Because the podcast is kick ass. Yep. <laughs> I mean, as far as I know, we're kick ass. That's all I know. <laughs> Pretty all right. Yeah, you're gonna gonna go far, kid. <laughs> what about you? Any uh, any uh, good topics for the week? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Screwdriver. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. What? Oh, really? Yeah. Have I just been talking to myself this whole time? Oh, my God. I think you have been. <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh, all right. Hold on one second. See, this is why we need a canary. Uh, Robert, can you can you hear me now, Robert? Robert, are you coming in? Holy shit. We just fucked up like a whole like 20 minutes worth of podcast. <laughs> Smart. Oh. <laughs> SMRT, I mean SMART. Yeah, I wish that was alcohol, but I don't drink anymore. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, hold on, we should restart this goddamn thing. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We'll just delete the stream. We'll, we'll just both uh, regular upload it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all right. So. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the Guitar Builders Podcast. Uh, coming to you live from mm. the caves of uh, Vermont and uh, some nuclear wasteland out in Oregon. Uh, <laughs> no, no affiliation to the the goat touchers or 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 butt touchers, but everything's good. Everything's fine. We're here. <laughs> Ooh, awkward. <laughs> oh, I know. They're, like people are going to be like, "Why the fuck are these guys going on about like?" Why is he just hanging up like capacitors and like laughing and giggling to himself? Like, what the fuck? I know, right? <laughs> Fucking nerd. <laughs> oh, oh, man. See, this is what happens yep. when I uh, don't do a proper setup before we get on stream. <laughs> Jesus. Technical oh. difficulties. Yeah. Yep. Well, these, it's, I call it's these. Not like you, yeah. Not what? like you work in IT or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but these are like hillbilly <laughs> technical difficulties, you know? Like. Oh, yeah. Ugh, like I should go riding a cow or something and eat Vermont cheese and dr like drown myself in maple syrup, you know. <laughs> so I uh, got any, uh, what's your next step on your build? So my next step, where, where are we going from here? So my next step is to get my, uh, my plank, uh, leveled out on the face because it's a little, mm. it's a little teepeeing, right? Yeah. So that was part of the reason why I took apart the planers because I uh, <clears throat> don't really want to take the hand plane to it and then end up ripping a bunch of shit out. Um, yeah, you know, I just get some 40 grit sand paper and go to town. That's an option too. Cause I did buy 40. grit. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But, uh, 
No, actually, most of the sandpaper I bought was to uh, resharpen my uh, my hand plane because uh, mm. that's super super important. Oh so, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I got to keep that stuff sharp. Um, but yeah, so cleaning or fixing up the blades on the uh, the thing there was definitely a tactical move, so that I can get that all flattened out without taking a boatload of time. So. <laughs> looking forward to that because i actually did small or make my template a little bit smaller so that it'll the the body will actually fit right through the uh the planer oh yeah yeah so i'm gonna get the i'm gonna actually go and do a quick glue up of the the template and just you know cut out the shape send it through the planer pop the shape back on it do all my routing and then hopefully go on to the next part <laughs> yeah because there's a lot of spooky hey. shit i gotta do still and uh i think i figured out how i'm going to do um the cow the cow thing yeah you said you're gonna uh, yeah. route it out right yeah mm. but i was originally thinking of using um some paint um some white primer oh, okay. paint on the body so that it had hmm. like contrast with the, the cow thing um yeah but what i've actually decided to do is that i'm going to do a um a white lacquer over the body and i just found my, okay. my my pearl lacquer mix so it'll be kind of like a like almost see-through kind of thing i'll run it kind of light on the uh, the saturation and yeah yeah um i'm gonna do the the cow pattern as an engraved epoxy fill so that'll mm. be fun um hoping yeah. that uh the hand the little hand dremel doesn't doesn't go to shit um oh uh, yeah oh i hate that thing so much <laughs> just little tiny passes yeah little, 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 little tiny passes. passes yeah i remember when ben crow was like and i thought that before that i could use it and it's like and then i was like no this is gonna take forever why would anybody do this yep you know? <laughs> oh yeah i know the one because he is right though <laughs> like a, a palm router is like one of the most essential tools for what we do you know you just can't go oh, around yeah. having it um which actually yeah. gets me back to the the point of your build there that you're doing with the chamfer mm -hmm. and everything, are you going to hand chamfer it, or are you going to use a uh, a router bit to do your chamfer? I uh, I'm going to do a router bit. You are. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got a table router, just a small table router that I can yeah. use. Uh, but yeah, yeah, quick and easy. Uh, I'm not too confident with my uh, chisel work just yet, so I, I don't know how straight I can get it. <laughs> I actually, oh, and and I don't have a small hand. Uh, hand uh, planer oh yeah to a chamfer plane so you know even when you have yeah. those they're they're near useless because all the little like delicate curves like yeah. you're gonna end up having to go in there with a rasp like that's just how it goes yeah um but uh one thing I was, I was gonna tell you though is uh, uh -huh. when you use your your uh your bit to do your chamfer you should definitely go check out some bits at your local store um yeah because they have some of these other ones that give like this squared edge kind of thing, you know. So like it's like how do I say like I don't know, but you, you know what I'm yeah. That's to say. that's that's what I'm going with is a squared edge one. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna do a round over chamfer. It's gonna be a an actual squared off edge. I'll go get the bit that I'm using. Yeah, because I seen one that was like called like a Roman something, and I was like, hey, that looked kind of cool. This one is called. Before I go over there, yeah, it's a number 45 chamfer Ooh. or i guess 45 degree chamfer one and a quarter inch yeah so all right let's see that beautiful bean yeah. footage it's right there looks kind of like a teepee yeah just gonna leave a a clean 45 degree edge on that bad boy and you know oh yeah should be golden you know <clears throat> you know because i am all for hand tools i like hand tools and stuff but at the end of the day Am I more confident with hand tools or, you know, something that's more precise like that? Yeah. At, at my current level, something like that. Yeah, you know, and that's all. Although, always... although I did shape my neck today and got to got to play with our, our favorite. Ooh, hold on. <laughs> let me put that biggie screen for a second, man, because we are oh, part yeah. of the cult of the Shinto uh, saw, mm. and the Shinto saw takes mm. care of us. It sustains yep. us. There's all my residual dust on there still yeah now lick it still hot off the presses <laughs> yeah just Delicious. lick it it'll taste great <laughs> oh yeah 
I'll sword swallow that thing one of these days. Whoa! <laughs> you know, I think it wouldn't be coming out if you tried that. Because it'd just get caught, oh, yeah. man. Like, that... That's like having a bunch of steak knives, <laughs> like, tied together, you know? That's just, oh, yeah. I'd get, just... get it down and just be like, oh, it tastes like iron. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it all red now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. So... Yeah, because uh, I was gonna say I've I've always done the a lot the majority of uh, my shaping work uh, by hand, and oh, okay. uh, when I did the uh, the chamfer on the uh, the weapon of love guitar, that was all by hand mm-hmm. with the Shinto saw, sandpaper, files, and just a lot of swearing and sweating. And actually, oh, yeah. uh, funny story, I didn't have a workbench at this time. So, uh, my roommate had, uh, brought or bought an exercise bike and, uh, he, he put it inside in the kitchen. And so I was doing my like woodworking stuff in the kitchen with nothing. So his, uh, his mm. bicycle seat was actually my workbench for my, <laughs> <laughs> and hey, I mean, at least, at least the bike was getting some action. Yeah. Yeah. Actually it was, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, he actually was a little pissed at first, but he kind of got, he kind of started digging some of the stuff I was doing. Cause you'd see like different shit happen to it every other day, like me staining it or, or whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I, it's a really good feeling when uh, everything starts coming together. Yeah, yeah. I was real skeptical about that. Cause it was, uh, you know, it was a complete mahogany body and I never worked, done any woodworking, like real woodworking. And I was like, I yeah. didn't know what to expect with it. And it turns oh, out yeah. that like mahogany is like the easiest material to work with. And I'm like so happy. Yeah, I love that. it. Yeah, I mean, I, I do most of my guitars out of mahogany. This is going to be the first time I did a mahogany neck, yeah. mind you. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to just take it slow when I'm doing my finish. And I start with some wood grain filler. And, you know, I've always loved the old Gibson mahogany necks mm-hmm. and stuff, you know, with the red lacquer and stuff over it. Oh, man, it's sexy. Yeah. Shit. You know that yeah, so but... actually a funny story is my roommate does have one of those Les Pauls with the uh the the red lacquer finish on the back of that mahogany neck. And nice. uh that is a handsome, handsome guitar. Uh one hundred percent. I I love that thing and he loves it too. You know, mm-hmm. I mean like he, he just barely started playing like about a month and a half ago and he's he just loves playing that thing out of all of them. He's got like nice. the Hendrix strat, he's got another black Paul, some Gibson or uh, some Ibanez that he bought. So I mean he's <clears throat> he's rocking. So out what happened? Court. Did he start? Did he start collecting before he started playing, or what? Yeah, that's exactly it, right there, my friend. You know. Okay. But, I uh, feel it. Yeah, and I'm actually really happy to see him playing too. It's like really cool. He's been borrowing my tools because he's been hot rodding his shit too. And I get worried because you know he's like ah, like with the solder yep. and stuff. I'm like, yeah, you go, boy. You go get it. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> hey well if he messes it up you gotta practice on fixing it right well you know i always have to help whenever uh but he he hasn't messed anything up on his own at all which is great he's done a really good job yeah. you know he reads stuff uh oh good you know he yells at musicians friend every so often it's great to hear that too calls him, oh yeah where's my shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah those guys fucking suck but you know that's neither here nor there you know, it's actually uh, funny you do mention that, though, because th- this is where it is here. Um, we've noticed that every time that, that my roommate buys something from them, they're always getting, uh-huh. they're always getting something from another retailer and drop shipping uh-huh. it to him. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, he, when he bought a Les Paul, it was sent from Guitar Center to here. It's like, what the fuck? I yeah, thought we were getting our shit I, from Musician's Friend. It, isn't Musician's Friend basically just like, I don't know. It's kind of like an Amazon.com for music supplies. I guess basically. that's what it is now. Yeah. I mean, do they have any of their own brands or anything? I don't So I don't they recall. used They used to have a house brand it's, called Rogue <clears throat> a long uh, time okay. ago. And they actually made like some really good amplifiers. Like I had a 212 or 210 or 212 cabinet uh, from them mm. that was 100 watts. The overdrive oh, in nice. it sucked balls. But that was one of the cleanest sounding solid state amps I ever owned. Oh, okay. And it was just loud. Like you, you could blast your your neighbors out of their house. Uh, you could scare small children with it. It was great. You know. Everything you need in an amp. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh my Sounds god, I'm mean. still I'm still salty about uh, not checking to make sure that my uh, my microphone was part of the mix. And my, <laughs> poor son, my poor son Robert. 
who uh, like, subscribe right now because you're our viewers and we need it. We demand it. And then in return, <laughs> we will send out positive manifestations through the ether. Um, yep. But yeah, I, I just, oh my God. Why? <laughs> I mean, I heard you the whole time, so. Yeah. Got well, kept something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? I, it's because uh, when you hard specify your microphone mm -hmm. in OVS, and I'm just going through this right now. Like right now, you either have the option of your default microphone, your interface, right? Like the, the camera capture that I have. Um, yeah. And whatever. So I, I usually stick it to default because the Blue Yeti is always my default no matter what I plug in. But I plugged gotcha. in the microphone after I started OBS. So OBS was not knowing what was going on here. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. I guess we learned something today. Yeah. Plug stuff in. Yeah. First. Plug it hard. <laughs> plug it hard. Make yeah. sure you get that click sound. <laughs> well, shit. I... You got anything else for it today, or you want to lead us out of this uh, this hellscape? Oh my God! I think that I will say the following. Today was bought to you in part by the letter four. For what reason did I fuck this podcast up? Not a sponsor accepting sponsorship. Yeah, that's totally <laughs> what we're doing. Um, send us an email. Uh, you can find my website at uh, ezoguitars dot com. Uh, you guys really need to get a website, by the way. Do you have a website? One of these days, I will build, <laughs> I will build you a website, sir. Please kindly send yeah. me five hundred US dollars, and I will build you a website. Right. <laughs> five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh man, Bible boy. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yep. yeah, I mean, this has been the Guitar Builders podcast, and I'm one host of of two hosts. Uh, I'm Mike Furlan, and this is our, our man Travis over here. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, do you have mm -hmm. anything else to add to this this craziness before we we kill this? Um, uh, build on my friend, friends and family, you know, mm -hmm. just even if you think you suck, you probably do. I know I do. I uh, just keep on going and eventually you'll get good. Yep. <laughs> hey, it's just like playing guitar. You know, you, you got to get used to sucking before you can become great. That's exactly that's how it goes. We, with we don't all start off like Ben Crow. So yeah. we can't all afford them, uh, them fancy, uh, you know, classroom settings, you know, abroad. So yeah, baroque I'm instruments. Sitting, sitting here trying my bro my best. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. But yeah. All right, man. Good talking with you. Thanks All for right. watching, guys. Later. Later. Like and subscribe because you know you want to.